Hi guys and welcome to the channel. As you can tell, I've got Aaron and we're going to be going through the Associate Nations for the T20 World Cup. Really, really looking forward to this. And uh, I'm sure viewers and myself, although some of you viewers might have fantastic extensive knowledge of the Associate Nations, but I don't. So that's why I've got Aaron on and he's going to go through some of the notable players and people to look out for as well in the squad. So we're going to go over Scotland, Papua New Guinea, Oman, Namibia, Netherlands and Ireland, if I'm not mistaken, which is make six. Uh, and we will be doing uh, other, hopefully anyway, uh, we will definitely be doing previews for the other countries, uh, the test playing nations. So keep an eye out for that as well. Right. OK, let's get into this then. Scotland, Aaron, take me through it. What am I looking at? Right, you are looking at one of the best teams in associate cricket. Scotland are incredibly strong. They had a fantastic T20 World Cup qualifying campaign in 2019. And a lot of these guys will actually be very, very familiar to fans of county cricket. So, for example, Josh Davey plays for Somerset. has been fantastic in particular in Red Bull cricket. Brad Will plays for, for Hampshire. George Muncy played a little bit for Kent this season. Callum McLeod has played for Sussex in the past. Carl Kurtz played for Northampton and Durham. So there are plenty of, of guys here who are of a very, very good calibre. In terms of players to watch out for, you can see the, the, the capital C on the screen, Carl Kurtzer, the captain, 37 years of age, has literally been there and done it all over the world for Scotland. One of their most prolific players, if you remember the 2015 World Cup as well, that was a 50-over tournament, but he had a fantastic tournament for Scotland. And even in 2016 as well, is a real linchpin at the top of that Scottish batting lineup. So, Carl Kurtz, for me, definitely someone to watch out for. The experienced veteran, a very aggressive captain, a very assured captain as well. So, he, him for me, will be the real, you know, the talisman of this Scottish side. He will be the difference, I think, between Scotland winning games and losing games at this World Cup. In terms of other guys to watch out for, Callum McLeod, I've mentioned him already, very, very powerful, punchy and destructive batsman towards the top slash middle order. George Muncy, again, has a ridiculous strike rate. I've seen him absolutely clobber balls all to different parts of the boundary for Hampshire as well. He is a very, very destructive and capable batsman. And then in terms of with the ball, Hamza Tahir with the spin, him and Mark Watt, I think are going to be the, the two real key components yep. of this Scottish Shout bowling attack. Mark Watt, as I've uh, had him on the channel. So go check exactly. out the interview. <laughs> He's a very nice guy. I've also interviewed him as well, nice. in yeah. the past. 100%. Yeah, used to play for Lancashire as well. Mark Watt, another yeah. former county cricketer. But those two are going to be incredibly key in terms of the spin department. And then with the ball, Brad Wheel. Brad Wheel, the speed demon. For those who've been watching the T20 Blast, he was so clutch in the T20 Blast quarterfinal for Hampshire against Nottinghamshire. Defended five runs in the final over, and Hampshire won that game by two runs. So he is a bona fide option at the death, has an excellent Yorker, bowls at a very good pace. So for me, Brad Wheel, again, another one to watch out for. So all in all, Faisan, that Scotland team, I have absolutely no qualms with at all. Even guys who I see as, as backup players, like Ollie Hares, for example, has been absolutely crushing it in Scotland's domestic scene. So for me, I think it's a really good squad. I think they've given themselves as good an opportunity as they can with their resources. And to be honest, I see them making a push for the Super 12s. I really do. If that Scottish batting lineup clicks with the likes of Kurtzer, Richie Berrington, George Muncy, Callum McLeod, they can be getting 160, 170, even 180 plus scores. And then when you include the likes of a Mark Watts, a Hamza Tahir, a Brad Wheel, a Josh Davy, and Alistair Evans in there, the, the seam and, and spin bowling attack, this Scotland side could spring some surprises. So all yeah. I'll say, watch out for the men in blue. I think they could have a very, very underrated T20 World Cup campaign. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I think the spin department is obviously going to be really important. Uh, for Scotland, isn't it? Uh, let's be honest, mm -hmm. in, in the UAE especially. Uh, but the batting at the top of the order, I think if they can get to a flyer with Coetzer and uh, George Muncy, two players who I do know, um, then obviously they will uh, definitely um, have a bit of a chance. And in T20 cricket, I feel like it's a lot more of a, well, let's be honest, it's a lot more of a lottery than the ODI um, or Test cricket, which obviously Scotland haven't played in yet. But um, ODI cricket, obviously it's a lot more of a, I feel like it, there's a lot more scope 
uh, in ODI cricket to really shine through talent wise but these guys do have talent but just not being able to show it and showcase it all the time uh, and one thing that I actually think is quite important to point out is that a lot of these players are very good unfortunately they just don't get picked up for franchises because they're seen as an association uh, and so they go with players that actually aren't as good in the test playing nations uh, so you know I think it's, it's a very very important uh, thing and uh, for these guys to do well and get through play as many matches as they can the ICC uh, T20 World Cup for, one for the countries to progress and to show that look we're here we're not just making up the numbers number two for the players because um, at the end of the day from, from talking to you know obviously Mark as well they don't earn a huge amount uh, so for them to get deals for franchise cricket um, would be uh, you know other competitions is a huge plus and uh, probably they should because they've probably got better records than some of the other players. Um, for Scotland, then uh, we've also, you've also given me a really nice summary um, of uh, the squad. Uh, very quickly, then the first, or the first one batsman and one bowler uh, who you think is going to be key for Scotland. I've already mentioned him in terms of the batting department. Carl Kurtzer. Yep. He's a lovely bloke as well. Really, really <laughs> nice guy. Excellent captain. If you speak to the Scotland lads, honestly, every single one of them really sees him as a role model and an icon, to be honest, a flag bearer of Scottish cricket. So yeah. Carl Kurtz of the talisman, the X factor of the boys in blue. I'll go with him as my standout batsman. And then with the ball, I really want to say Brad Wheel, because again, a lovely guy, unfortunately inflicted defeat upon my beloved Warwickshire the other day in the county championship with some fantastic bowling. So I will go with Brad Wheel as the standout bowler slash Hamza to here. I think he'll be an interesting one as well. It's been an excellent form for Scotland across formats in associate cricket. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Right, should we roll on to the next associate nation? Uh, it's going to be Lucky Dip. So let's see who we pick. Um, oh, okay. Nice one. We've picked someone who, uh, well, I say Aaron's going to be happy with everyone. To be honest yeah. With uh, so I don't <laughs> think there's any issue with, uh, with that. <laughs> that's, we're going to go into Aman. So um right what are we looking at here then uh aaron what are we looking at you're looking at quite a strong Oman squad to say the least there faizan a very very strong team indeed now for those who don't know oman are the second lowest ranked side in this year's world cup they're currently 18th in the icc t20i rankings but the key thing with oman is that in group a they, or group, group B, sorry, not Group A. <laughs> group B is uh, Group B is Oman's group against Bangladesh, Scotland, and of course uh, Papua New Guinea. So in Group B, they're playing at Al Amarat in Muscat, the capital of Oman. So they are basically playing their games at home. So this side, although they are one of the lower ranked sides, they had an excellent T20 World Cup qualifying campaign. And to be honest, again, the names on that team sheet are capable of producing some upsets. Zishan Maksud has been an excellent captain for years for Oman. He really is. Again, I'm going to keep on saying this word, but a spearhead slash X factor for the men in red. Aki Bilias, again, another one, ever reliable, always seems to pop up for Oman on the scorecards. And then the third name on that list, Jatinda Singh. I'm sure I've mentioned him on the channel before, Faizan. I really do rate him. He's a very, very classy, elegant, stylish batsman. Doesn't have the greatest of T20i averages. But again, if he goes big, he can go really big. So for me, Jatinder Singh, again, a real linchpin of that top order for Oman. Do I feel as though they're probably favourites to go through in Group B? Uh, I'm going to be honest, probably not. I feel as though Bangladesh and Scotland are probably the favourites. But again, you introduce that extra, you know, the extra element of, of home comforts. They know these conditions. They play at Al Amarat. It's a lovely stadium as well. I can't wait for people to actually, uh, to actually see Al Amarat. But I think they've actually chosen quite a good squad there, to be honest. There isn't really anything, you know, two out of the or two out of the um two out of the ordinary there for Oman. So all in all, Faisan, although I don't think they're the favourites in their group, again, just like Scotland, capable of of springing a surprise. Agreed, agreed. And uh, like we were Scotland, uh, key bowler and batsman. Well, Jatinder Singh, definitely for the batsman. <laughs> if, if you couldn't tell by my glowing review of Jatinder, definitely him. He's absolutely fantastic. In terms of standout bowler, that's a really, really hard one. Bilal Khan is an excellent bowler, good seam bowler. Uh, fires, but again, is another very, very good seam bowler as well. In terms of who I'm going to go with, though, I think I have to go with the captain, Zeeshan Maksud. 
to be honest. Excellent spin option. Has been there, done that for Oman. One of their most reliable performers. A veteran campaigner for the men in red. And again, he really will be a key. A bit like Cole Kurtz of Scotland. Because if you listen to the Omani players, again, he really is a flag bearer for Omani cricket. He has literally done everything. This is going to be Oman's, you know, first proper go in home conditions in a T20 World Cup. If he can come to the forefront, who knows? And again, that is the beauty of T20 cricket because it's so unpredictable. This isn't like ODI cricket or Test cricket where you've got much longer for the better team to come to the forefront and really, you know, um, influence their dominance on a game. In T20i cricket, one beginnings can change the entire complexion of a game. And in particular in a tournament like this, where there's only going to be certain group stage games followed by the Super 12s, anything can happen. So who knows? Don't discount Oman, but I don't think they're exactly favourites for this, even though they are in home conditions. And I do wish them the best because, again, lovely bunch of lads. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Well, I don't know if they're a lovely bunch of lads. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they, they are. are. <laughs> I'm in particular, sure they Bilal. Are. Bilal is lovely. Okay. Fair enough. Nice one. Nice. Let's get on to the next one then. It's like a, a lucky dip. Oh, this is definitely your favourite. So uh, it's fine. Uh, you will enjoy this. Uh, of course, it's Aaron's favourite team in the world, uh, Namibia. So uh, yes. we're going to go into... <laughs> He was literally waiting to be able to use the flag as well. Uh, so we're going to go into uh, Namibia. So obviously I know a few of them, but I'll let you uh, do the honours and uh, go through it. Thank you very much, Faisan. Funny enough, I was talking to Gerhardt's dad, Gerhardt Erasmus. He's the captain. I was speaking to his dad the other day um, about what this tournament means to Namibia. And it means the world. It really does. This is a team that are the lowest ranked side on paper. They are below Oman. They are 19th in the current ICC T20i rankings. But this really is a good side. And of course, aside from Gerhard Erasmus, who is the captain, and I'm not making a like-for-like -like comparison here at all, but in terms of the importance of this guy to this Eagles outfit, I call him the Namibian Joe Root. He really is that important. He is the foundation of that entire Namibian batting lineup. If Gerhard Erasmus can lay anchor, if he can build an innings around him, for the likes of David Visa, for the likes of JJ Smith, for example, for the likes of Zane Green as well and Carl Birkenstock. This Namibia side, again, are capable of big, big totals. So for me, Gerhard Erasmus, he's a great captain, lovely bloke. I've interviewed him before. As I said, his dad, again, is an absolute gem as well. This is a really, really good bunch of lads who have got a great camaraderie, great chemistry, and they are up for this tournament. Having spoken to a number of these guys, they are up ready and willing to fight very, very hard for the Eagles and that badge and Namibia as a country in this year's tournament. In terms of standout players, there's quite a few, but before we get into the, the regulars for, for Namibia fans, we have to talk about the big inclusion, which is, of course, David Visa. David Visa, former South Africa, I'm here in my Proteus shirt, used to play for South Africa in international cricket, plays for Sussex in the T20 Blast, has been playing for St. Lucia, in the CPL. What an absolute coup that is for the Eagles to have his experience. He's played in the PSL as well on wickets just like this. David Visa's inclusion in this Namibia side could be the difference between them festering towards the bottom of Group A and potentially even qualifying because again it's the beauty of the format. David Visa, for example, yesterday took 5 for 25 in a T20 game. If he did that in the T20 World Cup, Namibia could win a game, okay? And when you pair that with the likes of Benny Shikongo, for example, with Bernard Schultz, who will be my standout bowler for sure for Namibia, this guy was absolutely electric in the T20 World Cup qualifiers. I remember being in a lecture hall at my university and watching this guy absolutely tear Kenya to shreds in the UAE to get Namibia through. This, this side, and maybe it is the, the rose-tinted glasses, maybe it's the bias, maybe it's the fact that I love Namibia so much as a team, but I hand on heart hope that this side can make history, and I hope that they can make it through to the Super 12s. It is not going to be easy. They're facing off against Sri Lanka, Netherlands, and Ireland, three incredibly talented and capable sides. But if there is an underdog story which would underpin this entire tournament, which would give us all the feel-good factor in cricket. It would be that eagle side under the leadership of Gerhard Erasmus going through to the Super 12s. 
that would be my highlight of the tournament without a shadow of a doubt yeah agreed agreed i think um david Reese obviously was fantastic for in the psl as well um he i mean obviously playing for my team the whole clunders as well so he's been incredible like really really enjoyed um having him in the team and he really brings a, a fantastic all-round capability uh to that side and i'm sure he does here as you said fantastic bowling display in, mm -hmm. in the most recent t20 so uh that's a big big plus i think you said your bowler is going to be schultz uh batsman erasmus then is that kind of what you're going with see i know some people will want me to say david visa he is definitely a an honorable mention i will say erasmus but can i just mention two more players okay michael van lingen first of all has been absolutely exceptional recently so for those who don't know, Namibia have been, you know, getting into the, the swing of things before the T20 World Cup by playing some South African domestic sides, the likes of the Knights and the Titans. And Michael Van Lingen has been absolutely sensational in each of those games. So he is definitely someone to watch out for. Definitely the next big thing, I think, in Namibian cricket. And the second one is JJ Smith. Now, for guys of, well, well for fans who are, you know, au fait familiar with the GT20 in Canada, funnily enough, your uh, your backyard for the time being, Faisan. Um, JJ Smith played in Canada in the GT20. And I remember watching him, and he's a brilliant all-rounder. He's a very, very underrated all-rounder. But the real thing that's impressed me over the, I'd say the past 12 months or so, is his, is his power hitting. Out of absolutely nowhere, JJ Smith has gone from someone who's a very capable finisher at number eight to being a bona fide number five, number six. And he has got an incredible strike rate, absolutely searing. So JJ Smith in this tournament, again, this is why I mentioned the importance of Gerhard Erasmus and the likes of Stefan Bard and Carl Birkenstock. If these guys can lay a foundation for David Visa and JJ Smith, Namibia could win games in this tournament. That's all I'm going to say. And that is what I'll leave it as, Faisan. And fingers well, crossed it happens because uh, <laughs> it would be amazing. <laughs> Namibia to win the World Cup. And uh, on that note, that's a fantastic way to end it on for Namibia anyway. Uh, right, OK, let's get on to the last three then, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Netherlands, we're going to go through them first. Obviously, Ryan Tenderskata, I think, has actually announced his retirement. I think he's going to retire after the T20 World Cup, if I'm not mistaken. Or, uh, yeah, correct. We're at. Um, so um, I know some of these, so I can probably go through some. Um, and then I guess... Um, you will be able to fill in the gaps, I'm sure. Uh, obviously, Peter Seeler, the captain, uh, Colin Ackerman, Ryan Henderson, fantastic all round. Um, well, well, he's an all rounder, to be fair. Uh, I mean, he's got a phenomenal record. Uh, Bastelide, who, fun fact, Bastelide was actually the overseas at my club uh, about two <laughs> years ago. Yeah, that is a, that's uh, a fun well, fact. <laughs> he was uh, he was under he was playing under 19s uh for holland at the time and uh he actually had a shocking season but it is the uk so um he and to be fair to to be fair to him uh it was probably not the standard that he's ex he was expecting as well so uh as they say uh the swear word gets wickets i'm not going to say it on the channel so maybe that's maybe that's what it was to be fair uh for Bastalide. but yeah i mean he's been fantastic i think in the last few i think six months i think he scored a, a really big uh, knock in one of the T20 games, so he's been pretty good. Stefan Myberg as well. Um, I used to play for Sutton Cricket Club, if I'm not mistaken. It's a former Somerset, right? As well. Uh, or am I thinking of a different Myberg? Johan. Ah, so forget me. I'll, you can go over him. <laughs> Royal of <laughs> Van der Merwe, who is former South Africa, no? Mm -hmm. My boy. Yeah, of course he is. King yeah. And, uh, Shout yeah, out to Dan King... Cricket 93. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Rolf van der Moe also played, has been playing, and I mean, has been around so long. Fantastic experience. I'm sure he'll love the conditions in the UAE. Okay, sorry. Enough from me then. I'll, I'll pass it on to you then. Where do you want me to pick up, Faisan, in terms of the squad? Because that, for me, in terms of the associate nations, Ireland, of course, being a test nation now, that is by far the strongest. You've got so many experienced options and, of course, county options as well. With the likes of Ryan Tendershgarter, Tim van der Hoogden, you've got Rulla van der Merwe, who is an absolute king. Okay, he's a lovely bloke as well. I've had him on the podcast. He's 10 out of 10. Great celebrations, great left arm off spinner, handy batsman as well. This will be the year of Rulla. I have absolutely no doubt at all. Brandon Glover as well, the man nicknamed the Camel, um, because he's always got the hump. He's, he's quite um, a, a feisty 
angry character on the field, but he's an absolute gun seamer, can hit 140 kph. Fred Clarsen also plays for Kent, has been excellent for them in their T20 Blast campaign. And Logan Van Bates, another one, uh, plays for Wellington in New Zealand and, of course, Darvish here in England and Wales. So on paper, that Netherlands side is by far the strongest associate team. Colin Ackerman as well, a man who I haven't even mentioned yet. In 2019, I watched him take world record figures of 7 for 18 against Warwickshire at Grace Road, which we got absolutely hammered in. So Colin Ackerman is someone who I'm very, very familiar with. Um, he's an excellent cricketer and again, a very, very handy mid-order batsman. So for me, this Netherlands side, I think they're really going to be jostling for that second position as contenders in Group A. I've said Namibia are the dark horses and I hope they can get it done. I really, really hope they can get it done. But the Netherlands and Ireland, on paper at least, are the ones vying for that second spot. And yeah. with that team, they've got great spin options. They've got some excellent spin options with the likes of Van der Merwe, Colin Ackerman, Philippi Boisevain as well, good young leg spinner. So for me, this Netherlands side, really well balanced. They've addressed, um, you know, the, the key areas very, very nicely in terms of middle order. The top order strong as well. With likes of Max O'Dowd, formerly, um, well, born and raised in New Zealand, of course, and now plays his cricket in the Netherlands. Tobias Visa as well. In fact, I would say he's the, the bigger mission. He's a reserve, I believe, for the Netherlands. But I'll tell you what, he's a very, very capable batsman. Very, very good for the Vancouver Knights in the GT20 in 2019. So, all in all, that is not only a very, very strong squad... But I also do yep. think a squad capable of making it through to the Super 12s if all things go right. Agreed, agreed. I think it's going to be very, very exciting to see how they uh, how they go. And I think, uh, as you said, I personally think they're going to be they're going to go through. Uh, sorry, Aaron, uh, but uh, yeah, I think they are going to be the ones to go through personally. But we shall see. We shall no see. Faith. No faith. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> let's go on to the last two then. Um, so I think we've got, yeah, Ireland, of course. We'll go over Ireland first, and then I think it's Papua New Guinea to round it up, leave the best till last. Um, let's go on to Ireland. I can go through some of this because I've got a fairly okay knowledge of some of them. Uh, so obviously, Andrew Balburnie, very, very impressive technical batsman um i don't know how well he's going to do in the t20 stuff i know he's he scored some scores but i feel like he's more of an odi batsman but let's see how he does i think he's uh he's classy so i think they'll be hoping that he can uh, get some runs and they can i guess work around him he is the irish joe root i guess uh, <laughs> for ireland uh mark Adair, obviously uh kind of tidy bowler barry mccarthy i'm not sure about him so i'll leave that to you kevin o'brien obviously i mean everyone knows kevin o'brien i mean how can he not uh obviously big hitter and uh yeah, I mean... I still get flashbacks to 2011. Much. Exactly, yeah. Kevin O'Brien uh, and Bengaluru. <laughs> exactly. Kevin O'Brien. I don't know if he bowls anymore a little bit as well, but um, he he definitely used to, but he whacks it, doesn't he, Kevin O'Brien? Curtis Camphoe, who I'm really impressed by. Uh, fantastic young all-rounder. Uh, he was actually... I mean, I've been really impressed with his bowling and batting capabilities. He's been fantastic. Um, Neil Rock and Gareth Delaney, I'll leave to you. Simi Singh, though, has been good, I know, recently. And George Dockrell, the left-arm spinner. He's been good. Uh, Paul Sterling, I mean, what do you want to say? I mean, apparently I've been likened to Paul Sterling in my batting prowess, so I don't know why. Uh, from the subscribers. I think that's a reach. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I think that's more to do with, that's more to do with not ability, uh, but how the, how my technique looks, um, I think. The uh, aesthetics. Before, the aesthetics, exactly. Not facially, uh, but batting-wise. <laughs> um, so, but, uh, yeah, so Paul Sterling, Obviously, huge hitter at the top of the order. Fantastic T20 batsman. Uh, Shane Gatke, I'll leave that to you. Harry Tech, obviously, middle order batsman, if I'm not mistaken, as well. <laughs> Aaron's laughing at my uh, my kind of bits and pieces knowledge of the Ireland squad. Uh, Andrew McBride, a bowler, if I'm not mistaken. Left arm off spinner, yeah. Yeah, left arm off spinner, yeah. And Craig Young, uh, who, again, I'll leave to you. So, right, okay. Uh, Aaron, I've done my bit, and uh, you can now pick up the pieces <laughs> from what I've left off. So, really, spies, then, I think you've done a very, very nice job there. And of course, the only thing that I will say, the real strength for me of this Irish side is options, in particular bowling options. They've got the likes of Dockrell, Simi Singh, Andy McBride and Andy Balburnie. Balburnie can obviously bowl off spin as well. Same with Paul Sterling. So there, as opposed to England, who again, I suppose we'll have to talk about a later date, maybe are a little bit more limited with their spin options. Right there, I've just given you five names who are pretty much going to be on the team sheet for Ireland, potentially for the majority 
of this group stage. And of course, if they do reach the Super 12s as well. So lots of spin options. In particular, the likes of Simi Singh has been absolutely fantastic. An experienced figurehead of the Irish outfit. Andy McBride, the veteran. And of course, George Dockrell used to play for Somerset here in England and Wales. Was excellent um, in 2020. And of course, the start of 2021 is really having um, a purple patch in the format actually this year. So again, I'm interested to see how he performs in this year's tournament. And then of course, you look at the seam bowlers as well with the likes of Barry McCarthy, with the likes of Shane Getkate, with the likes of Josh Little. The left-arm seam bowler offers something different. Mark Adair, my boy, used to play for Warwickshire. Lovely to have him on the podcast as well. Um, and again, he's having a very, very good time of things in T20 cricket. Craig Young, again, is another very, very experienced and, and smart, innovative seam bowler. So for me, Ireland's bowling is actually their strong point. Of course, you've got the likes of Andy Valberni. The likes of, of Paul Sterling, Kevin O'Brien at the top of that order. But for me, I love the bowling options. I love the fact that they've got all these different combinations. So for me, Ireland, again, just with the Netherlands, definite strong contenders. And to be honest, I think it will come down to their match in Group A, which will come down to whoever makes it through to the Super 12s. I think that is going to be an absolute blockbuster in terms of associate cricket. Netherlands versus Ireland for placing the Super 12s. Bring that on. That'll be an absolute cracker. That will be. That will be. And I think that's uh, fantastically summed up. I, I actually am looking forward to seeing how Ireland do. Uh, they're always uh, a kind of exciting team to come across and they've caused many an upset in the past. So uh, don't don't think they're not going to be able to do it now either. Um, OK, let's then finish off on, of course. Well, it's not really. I don't think it's your favourite, really. Well, is it? Uh, to be fair, but... there is also one thing about Ireland. Um, yeah. we, we keep on calling them associate nations they aren't the Ireland are of course the test nation in 2017 but I suppose it's just you know we've grown up as them as of what as one of the, the most iconic yeah. associate nations haven't they and they, have, they haven't really played many, yeah they haven't really played many test matches so I, that's why it's my fault I keep on saying that but I'm gonna have to say associate nation plus Ireland in the video now um, yeah apologies <laughs> yeah, exactly. to the Irish fans but yeah, yeah they are apologies <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Apologies. I should put um all the qual everyone in the qualifying stages apart from Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Um <laughs> but anyway, mm. right, Papua New Guinea then. Uh let's go through this and I'm gonna leave this all to you. Uh, I'll go through the names and then you can let me know uh what to think of it and also I guess a little bit about them. Uh Asad Valos, the captain, Charles Amini, Legasiaka, Norman Vanua, uh Norsena Pakana, Kiplin Dariga. Tony Ura, Hiri Hiri, that's a really cool name, uh, Gaudi Toka, Ceci Bao, Damien Ravu, uh, Kabal Vagi Maria, uh, Simon Ate, Jason Keeler, Chad Soper, and Jack Gardner. Probably butchered about half those names, but if not, then I'm really happy. Right, Aaron, <laughs> take us away. I'll tell you what, Fires, and you've done an excellent job there, I must admit. Um, in terms of that Papua New Guinea side, the Barramundis, first of all, congratulations to Papua New Guinea, their first ever ICC major tournament and what a, what a path they had to success in the World Cup qualifiers as well. It's a real, real feel-good story for the Barramundis and a massive moment for cricket in the Pacific Islands. Absolutely massive. That cannot be underestimated. If For those who just want to see a bit more about Papua New Guinea, just look at Papua New Guinea cricket as an organisation, look at Port Moresby as well, where they play and what this sport means to them. And again, it'll be a bit like Namibia. You'll, you'll find yourself really having a connection with this side. Um, in terms of the team itself, one man who I think we're going to be seeing a lot in this World Cup, or at least in the group stages, is Asad Vala. All-rounder, captain, really is captain fantastic for the Brown Mundies, can bat, can bowl. And the key thing here is that he is the spearhead of their spin attack. So he has been excellent in T20i cricket, not necessarily in conditions which have suited spin necessarily. But again, we go to the UAE and all of a sudden, and Oman, of course, if they do um, if they do go through to the UAE, that has to be said with the Brown Mundis. But in these conditions, that will suit Asad Vala. So again, I think he's going to have a very, very good tournament. Charles Amini or CJ, as he's known in associate cricket, again, a very, very talented cricketer. Another one who can bat and bowl, he bowls leggies. And then Kipling Dariga, I like Kipling a lot. First of all, for the name, what a name Kipling de Riga is. But second of all, because he's a very, very handy wicketkeeper. The only thing that I would say, again, I suppose you could add this about the spin aspect. Will his keeping against spin 
be as prolific as the likes of Ireland's keepers or Netherlands or, of course, the four members. That is yet to be seen, of course. We'll have to wait and see how he does do in, in different conditions to Papua New Guinea. But with that being said, again, I don't see them going through. And I hate saying that because I like the Barramundis. I've got a lot of sympathy for them. And again, no matter how they're doing this tournament, this is an amazing achievement for a side in the Pacific. So we have to give them a lot of credit for getting here in the first place. But in terms of, again, I spoke about this right at the start, given the resources, given the, the players, given the personnel at their disposal, that is probably the best Papua New Guinea side that you could select. Tony Yor is an excellent batsman. You've got Asad Vala in there, CJ Amina, Amini, Legacy Arca, for example, and Asena Pakana. Again, an excellent seam bowler in associate cricket. So they've definitely given themselves the best possible chance. This isn't like South Africa, for example, who have omitted key players. They have actually gone with their best squad. But will it be enough to take on the likes of, of Scotland, for example? Will it be enough to take on the likes of Oman or Bangladesh? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. But as I said, no matter what happens, wishing the Barramundis the very, very best of luck. It would be amazing. And I know it might just be a fever dream. It might be, again, the rose-tinted glasses. But imagine in their first ever ICC tournament, we get almost a Kenya scenario. And they go through, and they go through to the Super 12s and somehow pull off this incredible underdog tale. So all in all, probably not the strongest side um, in their group. But with that being said, T20 cricket, anything can happen. I keep on reinforcing this point. One beginnings, one excellent bowling display, anything can happen. So bring it on. And I'm wishing the Barramundis the very, very best of luck. Ah, very well put and uh, very heartfelt as well, Aaron. Uh, very... Very, very good. Right, thank you as well, and I do appreciate it um, for, first of all, I guess, broadening my horizons and my knowledge on the Associated Nations. And I'm sure uh, most people watching, I don't know, I mean, maybe my my fan base or uh, subscriber base is just, uh, they're completely cricket nerds uh, like you, and maybe they're just incredibly <laughs> knowledgeable on their cricket. I don't know. But um, if not, uh, then yeah. Please, uh, obviously, have a have a look, have a watch, do do your research as well on the players that Aaron um, mentioned, because I'm sure uh, we will be seeing and hearing a lot more about them during the World Cup. So uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, getting more familiar with them as well. Uh, thank you, Aaron, as well for being on again. Please do check him out on the Cairns Cricket Podcast on all good podcast platforms, and also, of course, on Twitter. Uh, do check him out on there; very active, and uh, as I said. Uh, and you can tell uh, knows his stuff so very worth a follow uh, Aaron anything else you want to touch on before we wrap up to be honest Fires, and I think we've covered it pretty nicely there all I'll say is I'm looking forward to the T20 World Cup I cannot wait it's a tournament which I do love even though at times it hasn't been the most favourable to England I think back to 2016 for example and uh, Carlos Brathwaite thanks to Ian Bishop I don't think any of us will ever forget the name <laughs> Carlos Brathwaite but it's always a very fun tournament. And again, it's the unpredictability. It's the enigmatic nature of the format, which is why I love it. So again, I'm not just saying this, but I genuinely do wish these associate nations and Ireland, of course, the very, very best of luck because I want to see an underdog story, whether that is Namibia or Papua New Guinea or Oman who are hosting in their group at Alamarat. I, I just think it would really add to the narrative, the story, because when associate nations do well, I think back to 2003, the Kenya side that made the semi-finals against India with the likes of Morris Adumbe, Steve Ticolo, Collins Aboya, for example, who played for Warwickshire County Cricket. You think of 2007, Ireland upsetting Pakistan. 2011, Ireland upsetting England. There's a trend here. This is why Ireland became a full nation. But associate nations really do add a completely different perspective to the game of cricket. So if you can watch associate cricket, not only at this tournament, but of course, on YouTube streams, on TV, wherever. Just do follow it if you can, because it's fully worth it. And the guys behind it really, really do love this sport. They don't do it for money. They don't do it for fame. They don't do it for attention. They do it out of love for cricket. They do it out of love for their friends, their families, and of course, the love of their country. So if you can watch associate cricket or research associate cricket, or just follow them on social media, just do your bit. That's all I'll say because it is definitely worth it as a cricket fan. No, well said. Yeah, I think all of us can do better supporting uh, associate cricket, and uh, I'm sure they're a lot more relatable than most of the uh, test playing nations as well. And as you said, they don't do it because of uh, fortune or fame or anything like that. It's uh, you know after discussing the kind of the uh, 
the monetary aspect of uh, of it with some of the other you know of some of the associate players it's just, it's clear that they do it because as you said they love doing it uh, and they do of course want to make money as well but as anyone does in their job and profession but uh, they genuinely have a passion for it and i think uh, the more we get behind it the bigger it will grow and the, and hopefully the more uh, these guys as well uh, can actually enjoy and hopefully it grows in those specific countries and they do like Highland become a test playing nation wouldn't that be amazing uh, I, I feel like it, the more the merrier uh, but that's a discussion for another day uh, thank you very much Aaron and I'll see you guys on the next video please remember to smash the like button and subscribe and uh, yeah stay safe and well thank you very much